fans who weren't watching League of Legends two years ago or weren't familiar with how Faker revolutionized Riven play. It wasn't taking it to the mid lane. It was just understanding the animation canceling that most players didn't even know was possible with Riven. The amount of damage that he was able to get out through auto attacks specifically, queuing them up during animations. He just revolutionized mid lane Riven and Riven in general as a champion. As we approach the summer of 2018, Riven is almost at her seven year anniversary. This time back in 2011, Riot was putting on some finishing touches on their new champion, The Exile. Known as one of, if not the most toxic champions in the past, Riven players and Riven mains historically have been some of the flashiest, highlight stuffing, yet obnoxious players to have on your team. Either you get that high elo Riven smurf, or Yoris crashes, burns, and feeds top lane. But why are Riven players like that? Is there a reason based on the champion's design and kit? And why, despite being overpowered in the past, is she struggling in more recent history, especially this season? What has caused her overall decline in Season 8, and when she was overpowered, how come the players were ragers? <laughs> he would've, but he didn't know it. <laughs> Going from her development, her upbringings early on as a jungler, to the best Riven NA tournament, notable players such as BoxBox, and even the time in which she was a mid laner. This is the journey I would like to take you on today. This is the history of Riven, the Exile. Riven was finally released to the live servers on September 14th of 2011, as the last champion released for Season 1. Riot Games was very excited to release her as she was a super flashy, high risk, high reward champion that was unlike any other champion they had previously released. One of the most interesting things about Riot's original design for Riven is that they wanted to make a female champion who was strong and different. They had a problem and were criticized for overly sexualizing most of the other female champions at the time. Of course this didn't last long as soon as they released Battle Bunny Riven, but y you know what, we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. The dev team for Riven meant for her to be a Demacian that was supposed to be gooder than good, but found that this thematic left Riven overall with less depth and it was eventually scrapped. In turn, it was replaced with an exile from Noxus, who, after seeing the gruesome way that they fought, decided to break her sword and leave. In terms of gameplay design, they wanted Riven to play a lot like a character from Super Smash Bros. Melee, Marth. Originally, her design was codenamed Marth, sharing similarities with how she slashes and dashes and moves around. You can see how successful they were when you play her in-game, having similar abilities to Marth and also having a circular block shield in her kit. As far as inspiration from other games and other classes, Riven typically plays out pretty similar to a Valkyrie type class, something you might see in an MMO. Riven's sword is a runic blade, and the sword is powered and charged by runes both in her passive and in her ultimate. The Valkyrie class in the MMO Terra also has its weapon carved by runes, seven runes to be exact. And in the long-running series of Gauntlet games, Riven is quite similar to the Valkyrie class. Specifically, in one of my favorite games, Gauntlet 7 Sorrows, the Valkyrie in that game has short hair, has a green sword, and jumps all around. She's very mobile, has a lot of AoE damage. It's pretty mind-blowing how similar these characters really are. Riven's development went through a few stages and a few lore changes, but overall, it was pretty smooth. By the time she hit the live servers, it was pretty much known what they wanted her to be. In the champion spotlight, Freak was playing her as a lane bully top lane. Early on, Riven has an excellent harass game. While you do put yourself in danger doing it, tossing around broken wings and dealing damage with the art of war will give you a leg up. In this case, chasing around Singed isn't very smart but I'm able to constantly poke at him. But by the time she hit the live servers, there was a small problem. Riven was extremely underpowered, which meant that she got multiple buffs on a hotfix within the first week. By the time Season 2 had rolled around, players somewhat realized that she was not necessarily worth playing compared to other strong champions at the time, such as Xin Zhao and Jarvan. 
I don't know if she's gonna be considered OP or anything like that since she does have a little bit of early game issues. She's not gonna completely demolish kids unless she's super fed, but that's most champions anyways. She was too high risk for too low of a reward, despite her ability to snowball games very well. Relatively speaking, she was super fun to play, and was popular for the general player base, but for the players who were higher elo and higher ranked, she saw low amounts of play as players looking to join the pro circuit were playing much stronger meta picks. The interesting thing, and something that I covered in my history of top lane video, is that during this time frame, sustain was really important. Sustain was the meta, and Riven struggled with this, having no natural sustain in her kit. However, back then, she had the single highest base health regen of any champion. Her base health regen was off the charts, which meant that she was a pretty good jungler. Back then, there was no Red Smite and Warrior enchantment, and the junglers had to start Doran's Blades, so stacking a few Doran's Blades on Riven with her base health regen, as well as having some of the combat stats, made her early game quite good. There are some older VODs that you can find on YouTube of Stonewall and Dyrus playing her in the jungle and being fairly successful. It seemed like, at least at the time, this was her most effective role for the general player base, and even though she didn't see much competitive play, this is really where she started to thrive as a jungler. Probably the most important season for Riven's debut was Season 3 for a multitude of reasons. One of the first is actually due to a bug that allowed Riven's Q to start going over walls. Riot actually liked the idea of a wall hop mechanic existing because it gave Riven more diversity to her kit and the mechanic was seen as something super skillful in a time where Riven mechanics were fairly primitive. It kinda added to her theme of being hyper mobile, so on patch 3.10a, despite it starting out as a bug, Riot fully implemented the idea of allowing her wall hop mechanic on her third Q. Soon in Season 3, big name Riven players started popping up, the biggest probably being Boxbox who became known as THE Riven One Trick. He was a master of her kit and he was showing off crazy plays on YouTube and Twitch.tv, which was blowing up at the time, the big name thing was League of Legends content. There was also a Best Riven NA tournament that was hosted by Leaguepedia where many high elo players went head to head in order to showcase and prove their skills with Riven. Names in which everybody knew at the time, like Dyrus, I'm a Cutie Pie, Zion Spartan, Best Riven NA, and Boxbox all showed up to fight for the title of Best Riven in North America. After a hard fought final round, Mega Zero was able to take the title in five games, and it was a very exciting time for Riven. A tournament like this was important because for Riven as a champion, it was not only helping make a name for her as a kit and as a character, but it also showcased just what the best of the best Riven players could do. At the time, Riven mechanics and animation cancels were somewhat basic, and it wasn't exactly the standard like it might be today. Because of the hype around her, she saw slight amounts of competitive viability, and she was used as a counterpick to a few other bruisers, but she was by all means not necessarily broken or overpowered. She seemed somewhat exploitable in the top lane. The way that Riven players used her and the way that she was played wasn't at all close to her full potential. However, Riven's time as just a decent champion and as a top laner, and Riven's primitive mechanics and animation cancels were all about to change big time. The biggest event for Riven in Season 3 was a player named Barcode Killer, who was taking NA solo queue by storm, playing mainly Riven and dominating NA solo queue, going 20 and 1 in Diamond 1. Even people like Boxbox and Skara would watch him play and be amazed by how good a player he could be on the champion. Oh my god, wow! What the f Best Riven NA move over! There's a new god in town! Eventually, it was discovered just who this player was. It was Faker. He had come over from Korea for Season 3 Worlds, and to practice, decided to tear up NA solo queue with Riven. This practice ended up paying off a lot, where in Worlds, he used Riven as a counterpick to a very meta champion in the mid lane, Zed. He almost single-handedly popularized Riven with just how obscenely good he was at the champion, showing many players that when mastered, Riven was a force to be reckoned with. 
Season 3 Worlds was a big event, and because of the showings by Faker and Faker's Riven and other streamers, for Season 4, Riven's popularity exploded. Unfortunately, Riot saw her success and ended up having to nerf her repeatedly through Seasons 4 and Season 5 because players slowly grew better at the champion and started putting in a lot of time. This led to professional mid lane players picking her up and learning her because for several patches she pretty much was the best mid lane champion. Players who you might think never in a million years should be playing Riven were still doing it because she really just was that good. It's interesting because it was shown, however, if you weren't good at Riven, then yeah, she still was not that good. Without practice, she was not necessarily a face role champion, especially in the higher ranks or in competitive play. But of course, it was still universally agreed that Riven needed some nerfs, so her shield duration was reduced from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds, and she got a lot of damage nerfs and some cooldown nerfs, which meant that she started to fall out of favor not just due to the nerfs, but also the nerfs to other champions and other meta things falling out. Riven was specifically used as a counterpick to Zed and Gragas, and when Gragas got completely gutted out of mid lane, it meant that Riven favor was no longer needed. Despite this, the Riven mains kept playing her and kept getting better. Players who are very notable at this time, such as the Shy, Lord Master King, Boxbox, Viper, and Best Riven NA, showed that even in high elo, when you are amazing at Riven and can play her at peak performance, she was still a very, very strong champion. This meant that Riven's win rate and ban rate spiked quite a bit as the population of the solo queue ladder started fearing really good Riven players, and they feared the players on their team who were trying to be challenger level Riven players, so they might have banded away just so their own top laner wouldn't play her. Now a bunch of players wanted to get their hands on Riven and start mastering her towards perfection, working on their animation cancels, combos, and niche mechanics that way they could play Riven at a top level. During the beginning and middle parts of Season 5, Riven saw fairly little competitive play. This was because overall she wasn't great for the top lane meta, as a lot of the time people were playing tanks or mage top laners, such as Maokai or Ryze. There was also a segment in Season 5 where Smite top was taken, simply because Cinderhulk was so overpowered that players like Huni were playing Lee Sin and Hecarim top lane with Smite. Towards the end of Season 5, we saw something interesting happen. Riven received no direct buffs whatsoever, yet as we approached the World Championships and during the World Championships, Riven would become a favorable pick in the top lane. There were two big reasons for this. First one was a strategy at the time known as double jungling. Back in Season 5, the jungle camps were quite a bit different than they are now. Killing the jungle camp not only got the XP for you, but if anybody was near you, you also got the XP. There was a strategy known as double jungling, where the top laner and the jungler would do a few camps together, that way your top laner would hit level 2, go back and buy a few potions, and then TP back top lane. When it comes to Riven, this was a fantastic strategy, and the reason for that is because you always got to start a Doran's Blade and then TP back to lane with 4 or 5 health potions. You weren't punished at all for going Longsword because now you don't have any lifesteal or health, and you weren't punished for going Doran's Blade because you only had one potion. This meant that Riven could play very aggressive in lane, and at the time there wasn't as much damage in the game, and she was able to still punish despite receiving nerfs back in Season 4, she was still a great lane bully. The other indirect reason had to do with a few reworks. There were quite a few reworks for fighters, notably Gangplank and Fiora during this time, and there was also the Juggernaut rework. Season 5 Worlds was historic for being one of the biggest mess ups in Riot's history, and this was because they ended up doing this massive juggernaut rework, reworked a bunch of champions right before the World Championships, and when the players came in they didn't know what to play, and the meta wasn't very stable. This caused a lot of variance in the games, and a lot of players, especially the pros, were upset by this. However, when it came to two of the reworks, Gangplank and Fiora, Riven happened to do quite well into them. Gangplank could not really deal with Riven, especially when she hit level 6, and as far as Fiora, there was kind of this little 50-50 skill matchup, where if the Riven gets really far ahead, the Fiora can't really do anything. 
Both of these champions after their rework were seen as some of the best champions in the game and Gangplank could even be flexed to the mid lane. Funny enough, if you pay attention to the draft, a lot of people remember Faker's Season 5 playoff game of Riven vs Cassiopeia mid lane, but the whole reason he picked it is because he thought Gangplank was going mid. Riven is not a counter to Cassiopeia whatsoever, but he's Faker so he dodges the ult anyway. Because of the reworks, and the double jungling, and her itemization being quite a bit better at the time, this is when Season 5 World Championships came around and Riven became a favorable pick, and this is also when we got Hooney's famous quadra kill. Reckless tries to zone the team out, there's Annie so low, but there come the teleports, Hooney has arrived, and all of, all of, holy crap, everyone's dying in this fight, Reckless goes down, Zatai gets a bunch Hooney, back, but Hooney, the double, 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 the As Season 5 winded down, Riven's popularity, much like in Season 3, started to go up in solo queue due to her competitive success and pick rate. Funny enough, in my personal history of Riven, this is when I started playing Riven as well. The entire reason I started playing Riven was because of Season 5 Worlds. Of course, at the time, Riot took note that her ability to snowball was slightly too strong and increased the cooldown on her ultimate. The reason they did this was because at the time, it made it a little bit too easy for Riven to get cooldown reduction, and most players were rushing Lucidity Boots, so if you were able to get the snowball rolling, it felt like your ulti was constantly up, so increasing the cooldown by 20 seconds at rank 1 was a nice little nerf that they gave her. And for patch 5.21, this all seemed fine and dandy. However, things are about to change when we get to patch 5.22, and the landscape and scope of top lane would change for the foreseeable future. As Preseason 6 came up, so did the dreaded patch of 5.22, where Riot removed Riven's core item that she had bought for years, Brutalizer. This was massive for Riven's early game build path since it changed what built into Yomu's Ghostblade and Black Cleaver, simultaneously forcing Riven into a more awkward build path in lane. The Brutalizer was split up into two items, the Serrated Dirk and Caulfield's Warhammer. Of all of the champions in the game, this probably hurt Riven the most. It's not that other champions didn't build Brutalizer, champions like Pantheon, Zed, and Talon were just as good with Brutalizer, but the only difference is that Riven was much more reliant on the CD and to this day, you still see this pattern. When building into their first longsword item, Zed, Talon, and Pantheon will typically go for a serrated Dirk, whereas Riven will itemize into the Caulfield's Warhammer. Brutalizer was such an effective item on Riven, giving her damage, cooldown reduction, and attack damage all for 1337 gold. It was at this time that people were at a loss on what to build on her and what to take in terms of the new runes and new masteries. Dedicated Riven main started posting major Riven guides on YouTube, and in order to help the general player base kind of figure out what the hell they're supposed to build, because Riven didn't seem all that good anymore. Riven was in her worst state since release. Her win rate dropped severely, and many people realized just how impactful this one item being removed really was. Even with the addition of Fervor of Battle and Thunderlord's Decree, she was still lacking in early game power which she had previously. It felt like her scaling had changed. This is a massive part of the story that I really want to nail down. Even to this day, you can see the effects of this item's removal and the changes to the masteries. For her entire existence from Season 2 up until this point, Riven was known as an early game lane bully, that was her play pattern. But you can still see the fallout of this to this day. Riven is now known as a late game scaling champion, she's kind of a 4 to 5 item powerhouse, and this is how she still is in season 8. Before she was known as that level 2, level 3, level 6 all in champion the same way a Talon might be. Eventually it became pretty obvious just how bad Riven was, and in the current state of top lane at the time where things like Poppy and Trundle were kings, the season 6 tank meta was in full swing. Riven would receive some compensation buffs over time, but it didn't really feel like enough. Slowly, players had to adjust their playstyles and how they approached the laning phase as the season went on. For Season 6, Courage of the Colossus as a tank keystone kind of seemed like a great option. It allowed you to trade slightly better in lane, and building more of an off-tanky style was now the way that Riven players were approaching her. Approaching the end of Season 6 saw many tanks being nerfed. We saw Courage of the Colossus, Grasp of the Undying, Iceborne Gauntlet, Sunfire Cape, Ninja Tabby, Randuin Zomen, all of these items that were OP on tanks 
were eventually nerfed. So as we approach Season 7, it might have been time for Riven to be good once again. Season 7 became a much better season for Riven players, as this was a season where Masteries and Fervor of Battle became a lot more impactful. Players who you didn't know previously, like Adrian Riven, now were popping up as being some of the best Riven players on the server, and guys like Viper and Revenge were able to hit rank 1 on the NA ladder. But none of these events, the Riven players hitting top of the ladder, items, and rune synergies being better, were the most impactful thing from Season 7 for Riven's history. The most impactful thing from Season 7 was actually the introduction of the Practice Tool. For all of the champions in League of Legends, the Practice Tool is probably the most important for Riven. It allows the general player base to practice and perfect their combos and wall hops without having to wait for cooldowns. We saw her popularity spike at this time and it helped the Riven community as a whole get significantly better at the champion. For myself, I was able to make a ton of guides and show people how to properly practice and use their time on the Practice Tool, and this was so much more difficult before. Back in the day when you had to play custom games, you had to physically buy 40% CDR, and even then it was only 40%. You had to farm up and get level 6 to even use your ultimate, and your flash was a 5 minute cooldown. You couldn't practice flash combos for 5 minutes. The player base, and especially Riven mains, have absolutely loved the introduction of the practice tool. Season 8 introduced the new runes Reforged, and for Riven specifically, it's been fairly exciting so far. So much experimentation has gone on with the new runes because Riven's versatile playstyle allows her to be able to go nearly every single keystone. Even in recent times, it's been somewhat standardized to do Conqueror into the Sorcery Tree secondary, as we see Viper doing this quite a bit and even making it work pretty well in NA Academy, and the highest rated Riven player in the world who plays on the Super Chinese server, the same one that Dopa plays on, still runs Unsealed Spellbook into Sorcery. Personally, I've seen a lot of success with Aftershock for myself, and and it's still somewhat viable to take Phase Rush just like the old Storm Raider Surge. When it comes to competitive success in Season 8, Riven hasn't seen too much of it. The only time where we realistically saw her in a major game, which wasn't NA Academy from Viper, who is known for being a Riven one-trick, was by Khan in the LCK. At the beginning of the season, Riven synergized very well with Unsealed Spellbook when Spellbook was OP. This meant that your Ignite was a really low cooldown and you could just spam it in lane to kill people. Riven with Spellbook was used as a really good counter to Gangplank, and Khan even finished the game with a very stylish pentakill. He's actually going to be cancelled. Here comes Riven! Oh my god, the triple stun! Massive key burst, triple kill, quadra kill! Is this going to be the Penta? He's going to be delivered at this time! Penta That's going to be the first Riven in three years! Penta kill for Khan and the 2-0 for King's Own Dragon X! Regardless of all these unique and variable playstyles, and still being some relatively high-rated Riven players, Riven is currently struggling in this meta. Riven has always been a pretty darn good solo queue champion, but compared to other fighters, especially like the new Irelia, Riven can feel quite underwhelming. Hopefully with a few changes and a few meta shifts away from such an early game snowbally meta, Riven has some time to get to her items and become that late game powerhouse. When it comes to Riven's story, she has one of the most unique and interesting histories of all of League of Legends champions. From very primitive beginnings where players had no idea how to animation cancel or combo, and now it's the standard among all high elo players. From an early game bully to a late game hyper carry, from toxic players in season 3 and season 4, to Underwhelming in Season 6 and Season 8, and from Faker to Feeders. Riven really, truly has seen it all. Thanks for watching.